and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for our last meme tier deck of the week. It is Star Spring Regen. Tomorrow we're going to be, uh, tomorrow's going to be Wednesday, so we're going to have our champion spotlight night, which we um, determined with our random number generator was going to be Karma. So we're going to have three different um, ranked Karma decks for tomorrow. But first today, to finish this out, uh, we have a deck built around winning with this alternate win con with Star Spring. This two mana landmark round and heal all of your damaged allies one, and then once you've seen, once I've seen you heal twenty two plus damage from allies, you just win the game. The game, the game's over. And so that's what our deck's built around. So we got Star Spring and combining that with units with regeneration. Um, because regeneration um, fully heals you at the end of each round, and so that is healing your allies. And so that's going to be going towards your Star Spring. So we're going to have Braum and Trundle in here. They both have regeneration. We're going to have Scar Main Reaver that has regeneration. Um, besides that, we'll be playing Broadback Protector that can, you know, uh, that we can try to be healing. It's going to take damage by itself by healing our Nexus. We also have Troll Gifts. Troll Gifts can either grant the allies that we have with regeneration plus two plus two, or it can just give regeneration to other things. So we can give we can have Troll Gifts give this Broadback Protector regeneration, and that could be pretty nice. Like where um, round start, heal our Nexus for three, Broadback Protector takes three damage, but then round end, it just heals back up with the regeneration, and then just every single round, and, you know, do that over and over. So that could be really cool. Um, besides that, just a lot of other like cheap interaction and combat spells. We also have Starlet Seer in here, which is really just going to be a 2-3 blocker on round two. We're not really building around Starlet Seer too much, but it can, you know, it, it has upside, right? Grant the top ally in your deck plus one, plus one, whenever you have some spells. Um, you know, maybe that's only like one plus one, plus one, or two of them or something like that. But hitting any of these regen units and buffing up our regen units, it just has really high upside. The 2-3 body is important. We have the Blue Sentinel also. Because those can like sur those can survive avalanche. They can do some blocking for us early to get us to the late game. We could put like an astral protection on a starlet seer, or you know to make it a lot bigger. We can use like guiding touch on it to help save it. You know it's just going to be a good early blocker for us. Tavern keeper is another way to get to heal our allies. Like tavern keeper works great with broadback protector healing it, or any other allies of like just getting three more heals up for the star spring. Um, and then just one Mentor of the Stones in here, just to buff up our units a little bit. You'll make that Braum, get that Braum, that plus two, plus two, or that Starlet Seer, plus two, plus two, or something like that. Make some gems that the gems do some healing um, for Star Spring uh, and things like that. All right, so let's go ahead and give this a try. Uh, if, if the Star Spring's not working, we got one copy of Field of Rush to put in 10-10 Brahms and Trundles. Um, if that's not working, that's going to be our other top end card. So we're going to go play our five games in normal. Katarina LeBlanc with Ionia. So they gotta be playing like the thing that gives a double attack with Ionia. Sorry, okay, that's better. Um, Karma Sharima double predict spells. Ooh. I like this opener. We'll mulligan the troll gifts. But I like Blue Sentinel as a blocker. Obviously, we need our Star Spring. And hush against uh, this deck. That's you know I own it. They gotta be like doing the buffing up a bunch of stuff. So definitely want hush. So this opening hand just looks good. We'll start with Starless here. I'm not sure if we really need to put Star Spring in right away. So we of course just have this blue sentinel that can block. If we really feel like it, we can hush. Pick hot. Pick hot. 
don't think we need to. Alright, so Blue Sentinel will die. That'll get some extra mana for next round. Good. Worst case scenario here would have been Elixir of Wrath. Elixir of Wrath would have been a little bit of a problem. You know, killing the young witch because the young witch gives the Shiraza the the uh, no, they have another one. All the save spell mana instead of playing the second one, so we can have Trundle and Hush next round. Perfectly happy with this, especially with having Hush. <laughs> this is we got some pretty nice defense going on right now. Brawl with Star Spring. My opponent's gonna have a tough time winning this. What do they got? Okay, going for it. Yeah, they're just going for it. This will be a good winter. These are trolls. Alright, so we're gonna reheal three. Yeah, <laughs> poor kid, yeah. Yeah. My shield is my sword. We should be friends. Man, that was even a bigger trundle that I'm wasting. Hush being hush. You like frogs, huh? Alright, so can they re can they set up again? Can they like reset up? The young witch and another Shiraza. That's what they needed. They needed another one of, especially Shira, you know, they need another Shiraza. Now they're gonna need you know more like double attack, might, all that kind of stuff. But it's not over. It's not over yet. All right, now maybe it's kind of over. By snow and yep. Stars. Now it's over. Why doesn't Trundle have like a cool Icequake line? You know how Trundle goes like, Avalanche. Why does he do anything with Icequake? He should be like, Icequake. I don't know. Say something cool. Yeah, I think Kato and Shiraza are dating. So opponent has a nice... Uh, a good deck there with both of them. Scoby Snacks. Alright, so this is the Cythria combo deck. Spectral Matron Cythria. We need to draw our champions, but... These cards are awesome if we do have our champions. I guess we just got to mulligan all of them. I guess we just can't keep. Ugh. Like, I'd rather have... Okay, there we go, there we go. I'd rather have, like, Braum with those cards. Sure is dark, eh? So they have the attack tokens on 1, 3, 5, 7. And so now if 
if that Spectral Matron, which is best case scenario for them, if that is Spectral Matron, they will have you know, attack token round seven with Matron Cythria. If, if they're lucky enough to have all that. Really, Starless here? Didn't want to show up last round? So, of course, I want to just get rid of, like, I don't want them to be able to go super wide with the Cythria deck, right? Like, the, the less units they have in play, the better. That was a really good round for them. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. But as you know, Braum never dies. Let your story shine. Four six fearsome challenger. We just need spells right now. Really use like some hush. Fresh catch. Well, it was fresh. Okay, so they islandered a new card. That wasn't the same card they islandered before. Quite surprised by that block on the Starless here. Down to only three cards. And we know two of them have been Oblivious Islander, so they have two units in hand. I think this one and that one. I think those two are units that are now ephemeral. I kind of expect one of them to be Spectral Matron. They pass. Not really winning this game very quickly. Dragon Chow is the first one. So obviously they're going to play a dragon. What will you have? A bag of your warmest milk, my friend. So the Avalanche will help enable the Star Spring. Oh, they drew the third single combat. That obviously really, really hurts. That was the perfect card to draw off that Screeching Dragon. Man, because, you know, now, uh, yeah, that, that's rough. 
Well, let's get another Star Spring in here and just double heal. So we're gonna heal for eight. So this thing's up to 19. I think without that, we certainly win this game. Okay, well, still no no Matron Cythria. They don't have that, that combo. I serve my people with pride. But they have a lot of dragons. Let's see what's out there. Should be game over. Unless they have a uh, another fight spell. So like they have to have yeah, like they just have to have another fight spell. But they've already played three single combats. So that's not very likely, because this is gonna heal two, and then that's gonna be twenty two, and that's gonna be game. Right there. Star Spring animation. Let's go. Okay, that's our deck. That's what it does. Star Spring regen. Two now. It feels like such a wimpy way to win, though, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, like, my opponent has all, like, these cool, like, huge dragons and everything, and I'm just like, I don't know, I, I played Doctor and Healed a little bit, so I win the game. <laughs> feels pretty wimpy. But it worked. Whoa. So they're like, alright, we're going to play Aurelia Zir, but that's not cool enough. So let's play Renekton Zed. And they're like, I, I don't know, I kind of want to play Aurelia Zir, kind of want to play Renekton Zed. You know what? I'm just going to play both. And so they're just playing both. Alright, Hush, you gone. Divergent Paths is is okay in this matchup. You know, we can we can kind of do either one, right? Like we can go find our Star Spring. It's an expensive way to draw a Star Spring. But it can also destroy the Emperor's dies as well. If that card is really bothering us. Which... It's a card, so that means it's going to be bothering us. Alright, found OG Star Spring. Place. Yeah, you think this kind of deck is wimpy? Yeah, it is pretty wimpy. Best not ruffle our feathers. How do I deal with Green Glade Duo? I'm not really sure I do. Like, this is so much damage. Hush. Figured it out. Let us get going. We figured out how to deal with Green Glade Duo. Avalanche. That would have worked as well. Troll gifts. Will on the Brom. The Ionians always remember those who came before us. It's like, <laughs> what? What's this? What's this Zed Renekton? This is just like the you know best deck in the format here. Where's this? What's this Red Zed Renekton stuff doing? You are safe. Okay, so assuming we need three mana for Hush, I have four other mana. I think we go Broadback Protector with that. It's either, you know, Broadback Protector or Kindly Tavern Keeper. But I think... Let's go Broadback Protector. 
Our enemies approach. I have a Sharima. Yeah, maybe they just didn't have enough champions. I guess that's a thing. Is this just the ideal hand? Turn one droplet, turn two green glade duo, turn three Aurelia, turn four Azir. But like they, they had Aurelia plus use the spell mana. Turn four Azir. This is turn five. Turn five Blossoming Blade. With another flawless, you know, they played two flawless duets so far. Don't touch my block. It's probably just the ideal hand. Because now they get the, they get this thing, so I can't even like kill the. Or, can't even kill this green glade duo. We have to take out Green Glade Duo. What will you have? A bag of your warmest milk, my friend. My name echoes through every rock, every canyon. Earthly fight. Good luck. Okay. I mean, this game's not over. I wish I could give you this, but I must give you steel. Stay by my side. I cannot ask for more. Not gonna lie, that doesn't help. That doesn't help at all. Man, what an amazing hand. These first six turns. I don't... It just doesn't get any better than this. And it's really this leveled up Azir, or sorry, leveled up, again, it's like the leveled up Aurelia with this Blade Surge. Such a problem. Yeah, when, when people state, like, a, a deck's win rate percentage, especially a deck, you know, like, whenever there's the most popular deck in the format that's, you know, like, the highest played, and they state its win rate, remember, a good amount of the time that it's playing, it's playing against the mirror match because it's the most popular deck, and so, therefore, all of those games, those are, like, two... Like, whenever Aurelia Zier plays against Aurelia Zier, or, you know, before that, you know, Thresh Nasus plays versus Th Thresh Nasus, that's two games of a... Um, of 50% win rate. And so like it takes, you know, so like it, when you, whatever the most popular deck is, it's gonna like mirror matches really drag the decks down towards 50% win rate. 
just uh, to begin with. And so you got to kind of wonder, like, I wonder what win rates are without including mirror matches. But yeah, this, this shouldn't be a win. having all these cards in hand. All they have to do is just attack six wide and I lose. I must become the leader they need. Yeah, or droplet alone. Alright, let's just get out of here. That was the best hand I've ever seen a really Azir have. And they had a Zed and a Renekton in their deck, and they still had the best hand I've ever seen. Because turn one Droplet, turn two Green Glade Duo, turn three Aurelia plus attack with the Blades, um, you know, turn four Azir plus bank one mana, turn five the the three three that attacks plus a, attack with the Blades, turn six the Landmark plus, a, plus the four drop that attacks with the Blades, that was the best six turns you can have. Like that's just the best best hand you can possibly have. All right, let's uh, play against some deep. We still almost held it together there, even against the best hand you can have. Oh no, I'd, I'd much rather play against that versus of Aphelios. I I really did not like Aphelios at all. I don't think we need the blue set Nulth. Maybe we go Starlet Seer into Mentor, kind of buff up the Starlet Seer. I. Okay, so Cordex says the number for Aurelia Zier win rate jumps from jumps to fifty three percent from fifty two percent after el eliminating mirrors, and I just I you know I don't know where you get the, those numbers, but I just don't believe that that can be correct. Some, something's wrong in the calculation there because there's there's too many mirrors for the mirror percent to only be worth um point six five percent. It's just not really possible. If, if they're calculating one of those numbers wrong, I don't know which one, but some kind of calculation like they can't be they can't be correct. Yeah. So if, if the deck's 20 percent of your matches are mirror matches, one out of five is mirror matches. You get rid out of. You get rid of one out of five, and so, because that you know that would should count both sides. Hmm. I guess we just pass because that that match of the stones is really vulnerable to all the one damage spells they have. Because one match of a mirror match is like two matches for the win rate. So you get rid of all of those, um, Enter, traveler, and stop all of those 50%, it's, it's got to buff, it's got to change it more than 0.6%, like not, it doesn't even change it 1%, like it only changes a 0.6%, like that can't, that just can't be right. Okay, so opponent's deep on turn five. King of Trolls, coming through. It's a pretty early deep.
pretty early deep. All right, thanks, Aros. I got you written down. The donation deck there. Okay, so that's normally a 7 5. Dang, that's pretty good. We've had two opponents really high roll us. Turn 6? How, how can this even happen? I guess... So this came in into play before they drew, and it put a treasure right immediately on top of the deck, and then they just drew that treasure. So turn six, they just have three eight eight overwhelms. Or sorry, fearsomes. Yeah, that's right. That's a high roll. Alright, well, if our opponents completely high roll, I have never seen Deep do that before, and I've played against Deep hundreds of times, and I've never seen that. I guess I guess our deck can't handle complete high rolls. These last two opponents. All right, we're gonna do a lot better than than the the last time we played against Aurelia really Zero. They're not gonna have well. I guess our hand may not be as good, but my point was that they're not gonna have as good of a hand. But I guess our hand may not be that good either. Send it all back. Ready, willing, and learn. So I like this Starless here plus Avalanche plus Guiding Touch. I'm thinking I can ask for protection in the Starlet Seer, give it to 7 health, and still block a Sparring Student this round. And punch. By snow and stars. But there's still the plus 3, plus 1 that would kill it just like last time. Which I guess it's only, they only have a plus 1, plus 1. It wouldn't be plus 3, plus 1. They're playing stone weaving for more emperor's dyes. Yeah, we're complete. Yeah, we're building karma decks on stream tomorrow. Yep. So we're gonna do. We're gonna play three different regions. And try to have all decks for ranked. Okay. Show 
This isn't great. Yeah, three mana for double decimate. Plus get a 2-1. <laughs> That's what that lead to follow was. For three mana, you get two decimates and a 2-1. Usually decimate costs five. Give me grace and Just stay alive. Because obviously, like, we have the tools to win a later game, especially with the Broadback Protector, and, you know, like, our Star Spring's gonna be, you know, keep doing its healing stuff, but can we just stay alive? Put us down to four. Alright, they're about to get grumpy. Grumps. Yeah, so we knew that was gonna happen. The sunburst is interesting though, so I could I can sunburst the Azir. And that takes up my entire turn. It's maybe better just to play the broadback protector. Yeah, it's got to be. Because it's just too easy for them to either have another Azir or just bounce this Azir again. I'd raise a thousand soldiers to fight for Shalima. Empires are built on ambition and servitude. Where are you at? You're at 12? Okay. I kind of want to put the Astral Protection on the Starless here, but we'll just pass. So I'd still have them. I still have the mana play some burst and protection. Behold the rewards of your sons. The order is given. Oh, blessed by snow and stars. Shurima never fell. They just always have another. Thirteen. Come on in. Good times, good friends. What could be better? Greater things await. Life stern. Yeah, that's this was a tough call whether to go like Trundle. They don't have any more rally effects or blade dancing or anything. I think, yeah, I think we got this though. They don't, they don't have anything right there. Yeah, then we we got this. That's game. Unless they can get rid of the star spring. That Star Springs at 24. 
this deck can play really good defense. We just kind of, you know, we got ran over by the game four hand that Aurelia Azir had, which was like the best hand you could have. But this time they didn't have that, and we were able to uh, stay alive. We'll just make that um, 28. I'm gonna keep this avalanche available. Oh, Homecoming bounces landmarks, doesn't it? Yeah, Homecoming would have been bad. All right, well we, we'll take the three and two. This deck definitely felt really good. Like, both of our losses... We'll get to it. There we go. This deck definitely felt really good. Both of our losses were to some real high rolls uh, in games three and four. Um, but besides that, you know, like, we really controlled the board well. And Star Spring win is a, is a real way to win. <laughs> we talked about earlier, it's kind of wimpy. Where they're, like, having all these attacks and everything like that. Like, usually you win in combat and all we do is just... Um, you know, do do some healing and and defense, and just put up a little fort. And uh, you know, if they don't kill us fast enough, then we just declare ourselves the winner. I guess. <laughs> like I, I don't know how this like really works in in like you know like like in like a battle situation of like imagine. Okay, well we we win because you <laughs> we we had enough doctors do enough healing for all of our wounds that you gave us. So the game. So just the war's over. Sorry, we won. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how that works, but it's pretty funny. I guess we ascend into the heavens, and then and then that's it. Um, but yeah, definitely felt like a real thing to be able to have Braum, Trundle, Block, keep healing, that kind of stuff. Star Wars Zero was awesome. You know, like we get, got to make some big Brahms and big other stuff. Like that was just a really good blocker for for turn two. You know, instead of like Blue Sentinel and stuff, it was just nice having Starless here be a good blocker especially that last game we got to show that off but so pretty cool little deck here star spring regen so those of y'all watching later on youtube hit that like button over there and as always leave those comments let me know what you think um for meme tier monday next week um this deck honestly this could you could definitely just play this deck in ranked i think i think this this deck's a good enough one for ranked um even though we did have it on meme tier day here i think this was this could trans uh translate over in ranked just fine all right, but anyway, that's going to be it here for Star Spring Regen. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.